Hello, in this presentation I will introduce the metric methods for computing forward kinematics of most of common robot arms. The main goal of the presentation is to carry out a study on the forward kinematic model of a robot arm using geometric or specifically trigonometric approach. It is a simple study in which we will see how to compute the forward kinematic model of a coplanar robot with two degrees of freedom. Next, we will compute the end effector position of a serial manipulator with three degrees of freedom. And also we will study the forward linkage mechanism. Finally, we will see how to compute the position of the end effector of a parallelogram robot arm, which combines the structure of the three degrees of freedom serial robot with a forward linkage mechanism. The two degrees of freedom coplanar robot is a robot that is used in many academic examples to learn kinematics and dynamics. The importance of this robot is that all its elements are contained in the same plane and therefore it operates in the 2D space R2S1, which greatly simplifies all the maths. This coplanar structure appears in many of the real robots. That's why it's an important mechanism to start with. For example, it appears in links 2 and 3 of a serial manipulator or a collaborative robot and also in a parallelogram robot arm. In addition to this, a scatter robot has also a coplanar structure in its links 1 and 2. In the following, we will study the maths to obtain the position of point P2 from joint variables Q1 and Q2 with trigonometric methods. In this robot, we will refer as link 0 or robot base to the link that is painted in, in white, while link 1 is painted in green and link 2 is painted in blue. The joints of the robot are those that link together links 0 and 1 and obviously links 1 and 2. Both of them are parallel axes perpendicular to the axis x and y, and x1 and y1. And for that reason, all the elements are contained in the same plane. Point P1, it is actually very easy to compute, given the length of the link 1, and the coordinates of P1 are as indicated in equation 1. On the other hand, the position of the point P2 with respect to P1, indicated as P2, 1, they are computed in equation 2. If we add up both coordinates, we can obtain the coordinates of point P2 with respect to the robot base, as indicated in equation 3. Therefore, equation 3 represents the direct or forward kinematic model of the complanar robot with two degrees of freedom, which can be expressed as a formula of their joints of the robot. A robot with three degrees of freedom, like the one shown in the figure, allows to establish the position of the robot wrist and is a structure it's used in many industrial robots, specifically the serial manipulator, also in collaborative robots and in the parallelogram robot. It has four links. The white one is the fixed base and it's known as link zero. The purple one is link 1, it's the first rotary link, while the green one is link 2 and the blue one is link 3. The first joint is a vertical joint and its value is defined by the angle Q1, while the other two joints are horizontal joints and their values are defined by the angles Q2 and Q3 respectively. All mobile links are contained in the same plane, as previously seen. Equation 4 represents the position of point 3 with respect to P1, based on the formulation of the coplanar robot seen before. So, in order to express point P3 with respect to the robot base, we must take into account that the x coordinate of point P3 1 and the angle Q1 represent the first two cylindrical coordinates of the actual point P3 while the y coordinate of the point P3 with respect to 1, together with the height H1, represents the height of a cylinder. This is actually expressed in equation 5. 
The forward linkage mechanism is the simplest closed kinematic change, and yet it appears in many real-life applications. In robotics, we find this mechanism as part of the elements of many robots, when we want to transfer the rotation from one axis to another, and usually the input and output links will not rotate completely. They are also known as rocker or crank, with a limited range of movement. The bar joining both links is known as coupler, while the fixed bar is also known as base. In a parallelogram robot arm, with a parallelogram structure, there are up to three four-linkage mechanisms. Two of them are used to form the parallelograms in order to ensure that the gripper is horizontal. And they are the ones that uh, appear in the rear part of the uh, picture shown on the, on the right. And they are highlighted with the sh shaded uh, vertical and horizontal pattern. These two are not of much interest since the motor that controls one of the fundamental elements that is linked to is directly coupled to this uh, element on the rear side. The interesting mechanism for us is the one that is shown on the front side, which is made up to four bars that I have colored. In green, we have the link two of a typical robot arm. For the moment, we will assume that it is a fixed bar. In red, I have colored the input link three that is connected to the servo motor that indirectly moves the output link three, colored in blue. The orange bar is the actual coupler. Once the elements of the four linkage mechanism are known, we can derive the relationship between the input and output angles with a simple trigonometric rules. First, we will obtain the distance L between points B and C. Based on the loss of cosinus, we can establish a relationship between the size of the triangle ABC with AB and AC known as well as the input gum angle. Therefore, in equation 6, we marginalize out the distance and, noting that the triangle ABC can be divided into two right triangles with the same height, we can obtain the angle alpha in equation 7. Now, we apply the law of cosinus in triangle BCD, but in this time, we marginalize out the angle beta since the three sides of the triangle are known, as shown in formula 8. Once alpha and beta are known, we can compute the output angle Q3O, which represents the angle of the third link of the robot, as if it were a serial or conventional serial manipulator. So, if we now take into account that the green bar is not fixed, is the actual link to of the robot, that depends uh, on that depends on Q2. Then we have that the gamma angle is actually a combination of the angles Q2 and Q3. The exact formula will highly depend on how motors are assembled, since manufacturers will indicate the zero position of each joint and its positive di uh, direction of rotation. Specifically, in the mean arm robot that you see in the figure below. This robot has two servos that has, and it has been assembled in a, such a way that Q2 equals to 90 degrees. That implies that the green bar is vertical and the motor turns counterclockwise. While when Q3 equals 90 degrees, this implies that the red bar is horizontal and rotates clockwise. Based on this, we can see that the gamma angle corresponds to the expression indicated in equation 10. On the other hand, expression 11 corresponds to the forward kinematics of the forward linkage mechanism, as we saw before, but now we have directly computed the angle Q3O. And expression 12 will or express, expresses the forward kinematics of the robot with three degrees of freedom as previously seen. In this presentation and study uh, on how to compute the forward kinematics of a robot with geometric methods has been carried out. 
Thank you very much.